Jay here from Stretford Paddock. That's Scotty. So that means it's round our way. Not round our way. No, round, round our, our way. way. How have you been, brother? Missing you. Pining for you. Yeah. Especially keep, for keep you. Keep going. Keep going. More. The neighbours yeah. link there. Yeah. Though, yeah. <laughs> See, because I've been in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neighbours link. I like it. It's weird, isn't it? Because we didn't see each other for, a, well, about a decade. <laughs> then we started doing a podcast together and all that. We saw quite a lot of each other. Then we did a podcast where we didn't see each other physically. Yeah. And then now I feel like we don't see you every week. Something's going down. I'm, I'm, I did I'm miss you, man. Cope, did you? I, I like having these sort of rants about football to you. It's good, isn't it? Just get it off your chest. We'll do our Scotty and Motty podcast where we rant, rant about everything. And on this one, we have a bit of a rant about football. And there's a lot to rant about in there this week. Do you in think? a way, I think. I mean, not, I, lots of rant. There's a lot to ponder. Ponder is the right word. I think there's yeah. been too far too much ranting going on, yeah. especially regarding the Ronaldo situation and the, the lack of signings. I mean, today's been a good day. We've got two new players, even though they were announced two weeks ago. I mean, it's delayed, wasn't it? Yeah, it was reasons. weird because the the, the Ericsson thing was like it was just like official unveiling pictures and all that, wasn't it? Last night, and then today was the official Martinez confirmed fifty six million quid. You know, it's all done till June 2027. Just on the Martinez one, I'll get your thoughts on it. I did a live earlier when it broke. Um, do get involved in the chat and the comments, as always. What do you think of, of the, the man they call the Butcher of Amsterdam, apparently? Uh, I think that I've mentioned it before and we've done round our way. I think this is a more pivotal sign. And then I think Frankie de Jong ever will be if he even comes to Manchester United. He's the sort of player that United have missed having a bit of needle in him. You know, I don't think that's that sort of player that will... To quote Roy Keane, leave a bit on him. <laughs> and I think uh, Lissandro Martinez will do that. But I think that does a little bit disservice because a sweet passer of the ball as well, out from the back. And uh, was shipping goals last season was a, was a huge problem. So it'd be interesting to to where he plays in the system. A lot of people are saying he's going to play cent central defensive midfielder in front of maybe Varane and Maguire. Um, and then the whole drama about, about his height was just absolutely ridiculous. This is, this. I spoke about this earlier, it's just, Boring, isn't it? And it's weird. I mean, I get it, right? He's <clears> five foot nine. He's quite small for a centre back. But this is the guy that, you know, he, he marked early in Ireland quite well. Didn't he when, when he played Dortmund? Yeah. Ajax played Dortmund. He won 4 0 Ajax. And Football he... isn't played in the same way where they have target, man. There isn't that many sort of big, boisterous centre forwards that there wasn't. The, you know, like, like, you know, like, like uh, Drogba, Shearer, Van Nistelrooy. Do you know what I mean? There yeah. is that. Football isn't played in that same sort of way as it used to be. So I don't think his height will be that much uh, of a problem. And football's played on the ground a lot more. And I'd rather have someone with his height that can pass the ball than someone like Harry Maguire, who's, what, six foot four? Yeah. Who can't. No, <laughs> no this is the thing. I mean, I, you know, I, I agree with you. I was even going back further back, like to the John Fashion who deal on Dublin. Oh, the big yeah, days. Yeah, remember Les Ferdinand oh, wow. days, eh? Get your head on that, son. Um, you know, elbows flying all over the gaff and all that sort of jazz. No, most attacking team now, or most teams' attacks now are basically inverted wingers, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, you get full backs who bomb on and can whip in a ball. We know Liverpool do it. But even though their players, you know, they do head the ball, but Jota's not exactly tall. So when Salah, it, yeah. uh, Firmino, yeah. I mean, he's not going up against no, big six it, foot five players. It's not players. really that kind of it's game. It's reading anymore. the game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And from what you say, I've, I've said this all along. I don't know a lot about Miners. I've seen some clips. I've seen the odd game of Ajax, obviously, mainly in the Champions League. Um, but you've got to trust this manager. At least give him a chance. Yeah. So, you know, if he's if he wants this guy, he knows what budget he's got. If he wants to spend a third or whatever it is of his budget on Martinez, there's a reason for it. He's obviously someone, like you've said, who can play the way he wants us to play. We saw glimpses of it, didn't we, on the preseason tour of trying to play football out from the back. Yeah. This would seem like that kind of player, wouldn't it? And it was the player of the season as well last year for for Ajax, wasn't it? Yeah. So I mean, that that in itself shows his pedigree. Uh, I'm really excited about it, and uh, I think a lot of people seem to be getting nervous regarding the Frankie De Jong. Is he going to play? Isn't it going to? Is, is, is it? Sorry, is he going to sign? Isn't he going to sign for United? But you make a good point there, Jay, about trusting your manager. This team that we've got now. I would argue is probably the best post Ferguson. And I know that we've had a lot of players leave United and yeah. I'm not saying that the talent that's left in the likes of Paul Pogba, but it was never fruitful at Old Trafford. Last season was our worst performance. We can only get better. I'm, I hate it that I'm optimistic. I actually think we'll finish third at a canter next season with, it, with, with, you, with, with the team that we've got. Do you know what? That's not the most crazy thing I've heard. I think what people have to remember as well, right, is 
there is a massive difference between finishing third and challenging for the title. Mm. I think we're miles away from challenging for the title. I don't think we're miles away. I, I, I hear you on that for challenging for third. I think it's going to be difficult. I fancy Spurs to be in that mix. I think Chelsea will always be there, thereabouts. Arsenal, I mean, they'll probably just be Arsenal, won't they, and finish fifth or sixth. But you never know. They've no. got some good players. So I, I hear you on that front. I think that it's doable to get into that top three as the third place, obviously. I think the, the the big sort of ask is to get challenging for titles again, if you can call it that, because of the gap we've left between ourselves, City and Liverpool. But we're not signing players this summer for challenging this this, this year, no. are we? And no. I think that's what people need to have perspective for when we're looking at who we're signing and whether Dion comes this summer or next summer. It's with a key over the next three to five years, and that's what uh, Tenag's been brought in to do. It's a progress. It's a progression. It isn't going to be done overnight. But I, I think, yeah, Spurs, maybe. The, the only problem I think with United now might be if Ronaldo does go and the, the goal's up front. Um, I'm trying not to get too giddy that Anthony Martial may have, you know, found his shooting what, what, boots. What, you're, you're quite pragmatic. Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell you something as well. When that I was that sounds like I'm going to get bollocked. No, no, it's good. <laughs> it's um, I uh, shook your hero's hand in in, uh, in Perth. No, Melbourne. Where you was shook, it we saw Fred? Wait. Was it Melbourne? You did not shake Fred's hand. Yeah. Um, he mitten was interviewed. Did it, it feel like it touching was, God? It was in the mix zone, right? And this is funny, right? <laughs> because you'll love this. So he's in the mix zone and the players weren't stopping really, but they brought Fred to Mitten, like the, the guy who's in charge of it all said like, Fred. So I was stood next to Andy Mitten and if you're not doing so, go and check out United We Stand and buy a fanzine, support the fanzines. So he was there and I was there with Mike and the, the, uh, the communications guy came over to me as Mitten's doing his interview and he went, he only speaks Portuguese. Like Mitten obviously speaks Portuguese and you won't get anything out of him. Like you can have a laugh of him, but he won't, he doesn't speak English. So there's no point because I've been hacking everything and trying to get an interview with him. So I didn't, I just said like, oh, well done. He had a good game and that and shook his hand, but like you expect, full of beans, dead yeah. happy. And it was great to see Andy as well. He obviously speaks Portuguese, doing an interview with him, sort of keeping that bar very high that he set. Um, but yeah, I, was, I meant to message you, sorry, bro, I forgot because I know you're a massive, Fred yeah, fan. Fred Appreciation Society. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think he'll do well under under, under Tenag. He was the best player under Ralph Ragnick, as far as I'm concerned, when he's pushed I, more I'm forward. I'm struggling to argue with that one. I think once you take him out of that defensive midfield role, which isn't him, you know, move him further up the pitch, let him do what he does. And he's been doing it very well. And one thing I've always said about Fred, which I do like about him, is he gives it his all. He gets involved. And we've liked that. I go back to that 5-0, and I'm sorry to bring this up, that 5-0 against Scousers. Ronaldo kicked, and I've mentioned this a million times, but I will always mention it because it's a great example of how, for me, how everything went wrong. Ronaldo kicks the ball against Curtis Jones or whatever. All the Liverpool players surround him. All of them. You know, Ibrahim Kanate, Virgil van Dijk, big lads, all crowding him. Fred and Bruno, the only ones who want to know. Straight over yeah. there, getting involved. And Fred's like that, isn't he? Do you remember Marcus when yeah, he took yeah, his penalty, yeah. I think, um, in, the, uh, in Paris? who was his bodyguard, not, you know, uh, Paris Saint-Germain player trying yeah. to put him off. So I like that about him because I saw too many heads dropping and you think, come on, this is Liverpool or Trafford. And I think you need players like that. And from when I was talking to, to Andy and a couple of other players, uh, sorry, people who know him, because I spoke to Andy afterwards, we did an interview with him a couple of days later and I said, I mentioned Fred. I said, oh, you obviously spoke to Fred. And he was talking about, you know, the, the good guy to have around, someone who, you know. Yeah. He's not the highest level in terms of his ability he's a good player but he's not like you know the best player in the squad or anything like that but his attitude his enthusiasm is he's, he's you know i hate using this expression but it's true he gets it and he tries yeah i mean i mean, I mean and, and the like i said the performances that he puts out on the pitch he always leaves it there and in terms of a, a valuable squad player yeah. i think he deserves to be staying at united ahead of maybe if you look at mctominay i'd take fred if you're you if, if, if you're if you're breaking that now. mac fred up yeah because i feel like the mcfred thing i think I've had so. this argument a few and times. I, I, I think because um McTominay may have done one good tackle in the game that he sort of gets off with the not being the scapegoat, which Fred was a lot the scapegoat for, for United's bad performances. And let's get it right, there was 11 players that were playing crap. Yeah. Do you know well, what I mean? And I think McTominay as well, he's good at the interview stuff. And he'll come out and after and he'll tell you what you're thinking. Whereas obviously, unless he's doing it in Portuguese, Fred ain't going to do that. No. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think people go, oh yeah, he summed it up well. I'll give him... I mean, listen, I've, I've said this. I'm giving everyone a clean slate. There's players that I expect to stay. There's players that I think will go. There's players that I think are good enough and there's, there's others I don't know whether they are or not. But I feel like we're in this era now of, of with Ten Hag of just giving him a chance. And I think you mentioned Martial. He's someone, if you'd have asked me two months ago, do I think Anthony Martial's going to kick a ball for Manchester United again? And I said, not a chance. Yet, yeah, he's had as good a pre-season as you could have hoped for. I, I know it's only pre-season, but I agree he can only do what he's, he's asked to do in pre-season and he's done it. 
And if Ronaldo does go, then he's got to take it by, by both hands. If you look at uh, the World Cups coming in December, if he wants any sort of sniffer getting on that plane to Qatar, then he's got to start performing for Manchester United. So that could work well in our favours, I think. Yeah, because he was unlucky last time, wasn't he? Because he was playing well going into that sort of that summer. We bought Sanchez, Mourinho dropped him. We he was... drops his head though, doesn't yeah, it? And this is the problem. He, yeah. If United do get a replacement for Ronaldo, I don't think Martial likes it when you've got a, bit, a bigger character next to him. Like you've got this Latan. You mentioned there Sanchez, Cavani uh, when he Cavani. came in. It's the same. So I, I think he likes to be the the, the the number nine, but I'm not too sure. We've got something to read. Or can yeah, I? Yeah, sorry. Go on, carry on. For, I also I, I met your hero while you were away. Trump's Fred. Really? You met Danny Welbeck when I was away. I know. Well, me and Danny from long time. Uh, no, we that's met, true. Oh, actually, old, you and Danny old, old meet him every day, don't you? Go on, go on. You are going to trump Fred massively here. Who so, did you meet? So, so I was out in um, Trafford. A little yeah. do. Right. God, and, uh, God's country. Sat next to uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. You discussed me. Two hours. Two hours? Do you know what? Right. I've made a career for the last four years. Or Actually two years. shared a stage. About two and a half minutes I did uh, sports in for. You've shared a stage shared with Shared a stage with Sir Alex. Tell us all right, so, going so, on uh, Gary Neville. All right, so Gary Neville and the class of 92 uh, run a university. Um, oh, yeah. U UA 92. Yeah. So I was hired to, to perform and, and write something for their graduation event a few weeks ago. Good stuff. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to get involved, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, and we might have a secret guest coming to, to do a little speech. I was like, all right, who? And I said, Sir Alex Ferguson. And I couldn't say anything to anyone. And I, like, I was the second person that don't because she got the person who booked me got off the phone like 10 minutes before she met me. Right. And I was like, because you can't tell anyone, but she was dead excited, so she wanted to tell me. So all the, all, like for weeks, I'm like the weeks build up to it, I'm absolutely bricking it. Uh, but it was nice as pie, man. I mean, oh, yeah, I was nervous and stuff, but it was great. It was the first time Fergie had spoke at um, anything like perform uh, like a presentation or anything like yeah. that in uh, four years, I think, since he since, since went to hospital. Yeah. And he was on such top form, what and he was that? speaking a lot about... Um, Felt how failure made him a better manager. It was never post winning things. It was always after him losing stuff. That was always what made him want to be a better manager. And so I'm trying to relay that information onto the um, onto the people who just graduated. It's amazing, beautiful. You know, a beautiful moment for me. Did you, did you have that moment where you're like, I'm talking to Fergie, I'm sat with Fergie, or do you have those moments? Where the nervous bit was when I was in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like. Because that was the first time, like we we, yeah. we we were sat in the same, we were sat in the same row, and mm. then uh, we're in there. And I'm like, I'm not going to ask him to shake his hand while I'm in it. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? <laughs> did you did you get much of a chance to chat to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a bit of chat. I chat to him outside and stuff like that. But yeah, it was in really good form. And yeah. like, it was really. I, I was trying not to come across as the sort of fanboy. Do you know what I mean? You're trying to keep it a yeah. little bit cool and stuff like it's that. It's 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 difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He could, yeah. could see me like I like squirming like. But he yeah. must get used to that though. Everyone must have that like. Yeah. Even non United fans, let alone United fans, just in order guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's great. I remember you, you sort of, well, the pictures are out there and you were like, look what I'm up to. And I was just jealous, but obviously buzzing for you because that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, in it? And to be doing something where you're there, I'm not mean as equals, but you're both doing something. No, you can yeah. say that yeah. we're equals if yeah. you want to on the <laughs> <No>. show. <laughs> I love you to bits, <laughs> but I'm not going to stretch that one. But you know, you're both there for a reason. You're yeah, not, you're I mean, for me, that, yeah, yeah, for you me, I mean, I mean? Like, like it was always my dream, like 10 years ago, leaving uni to try and do something with my career. Never thought it'd get me to share on the stage with the man who's responsible for creating the best nights of my life. So it's phenomenal, that. It is, it's great to see. I love all that. And, you know, well done to you, bro, as well. Do you know what I mean? You deserve it for all the, the, the risk you took and the hard work you put in, man, and the talent you Cheers, got. Man. Uh, Ed Fallon is in the chat. He says, Should the title be our, not our? Love your work. If you're a bit of an Oasis fan, you might know what we're on about when we say round our way. Um, a couple of things to get into is also, got, I mentioned the interview with Andy Mitten. Go and check out some of our content from the tour. We were over in uh, Thailand, in Australia, uh, for Melbourne and for Perth. We're going to be going to Norway as well. So we interviewed um, Andy Mitten. We interviewed Laurie Whitwell from The Athletic. We interviewed Rob Dawson. We interviewed Jamie Jackson. We interviewed um, Zidane Iqbal, Diogo Dalo. Um, at the press conference, me and Maka, Eric and I struggling with my accent for a little bit. I had a bit of a wobbly moment there and I thought you weren't going to understand what I was on about. I had to reword something. Um, so go and check out all that stuff as well and check out the merch we've got. We've got some merch on there as well. So go and check it all out. Loads of merch at paddermerch.com and all the other videos as well. And just on that front, I've got a bit of um, a shout out what I was to do as well. A bit of sad news. I just got this message just today, actually. Um, when we were over in, in Perth, and this is just not me for six a little bit, there was a bloke, an expat called Lordy, 
um, who lived over there. This is only last week. He was showing us around a little bit. And showing, showing us around, sorry. He was chatting to us a lot. Drove trucks um, across Australia. He'd moved over from, from England a few years ago. And he died um, in a car crash, um, I think it was on Monday. So yesterday evening. So thoughts with his friends and family. You'll have seen on my Twitter. Um, it was over there. He was leading the, the, the chants and all the singing, you know, in the po- yeah. supporters club. Massive red. Was telling us some great stories about um, chatting to Aborigines about United and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, thoughts with with him and his his family and you know condolences to them. Um, moving on to the Ronaldo front. Well, we spoke about Ronaldo. Um, we spoke about Fergie. Sorry. What did you make of this idea? Because now you are Fergie's best mate, basically, aren't you? So you can give us the ITK stuff. Right? Yeah, you're, okay. in, you're yeah, practically yeah, 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 yeah. brothers, aren't you? Um, <coughs> there was this story during the rounds, wasn't there? That. Um, he was in Carrington to convince Ronaldo to stay. Now, I did something really stupid, Scotty. It's not like you. I know. <laughs> You're such I, a sensible chap. I'm such, you know, a sensible dude, usually. <laughs> but despite my advancing years, I still make mistakes. I tweeted something sarcastically. Not on Twitter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I, I tweeted, like, you know, the state of this club. We've got an 18 year old. Yeah. And then straight away, people are like, oh, you, and I'm like, oh my God, no. So I had to do like, a, I don't genuinely believe that Fergie's there to, to, to talk to Ronaldo. I don't think Eric Ten Hag would have that. Personally, I don't think he's that type of guy. I don't know him, but I, you know, I think you can gather from what we've seen of him and been in, I've been in them press conferences. He doesn't strike me as someone who's going to go running to Fergie and go, can you sort this out for me? I think he's his own man who'll do his own business when it comes to Ronaldo or anyone else. What did you make of the the idea that Fergie was trying to chat to Ronaldo on behalf of the club? Absolute to... nonsense. And yep. like you said there, yeah, I mean, you, you've interviewed Ten Hag, but what I've, from what I've seen from the interviews um, and everything I've read about him, really, he doesn't seem like the sort of bloke who'd go looking for advice or from help from somebody else. If this was 12 months ago and you said it was, has Solskjaer got Sir Alex Ferguson yeah. in? 100% I'd have yeah. said, yeah, Ollie's been on the phone to Sir Alex. It just completely undermines everything that, 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 that Ten Hag wants to set out. And I think he has to make the decision whether he wants Ronaldo to, to stay or not. And he needs to make it fast as well. And I think the ball needs to be in Ten Hag's court to make the decision, not Ronaldo come in and say, I want this low move or whatever. Me personally, he wants to move, obviously. I, th- I think we can agree with that from what's, what's been going on regarding rumours going to Atletico Madrid or trying to find someone with Champions League football. Just move him on. If I was United, I'd, I'd seriously just cut the losses because I think if yeah. he, if, 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 if Ronaldo's in that dressing room, right, he's not, he's not the preseason. He doesn't start ahead of Anthony Martial for me now going to the Brighton game. Okay. You'd, you'd, you'd think that when Martial given the preseason and, and he knows yeah. how Ten Hag wants to set up, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be starting with similar 11 to one of the games over there in the Far East or Australia. Is Ronaldo going to be happy about that? No. Are you going to be allowed to have that size of an ego? And I love Ronaldo, and it's nothing against him. I, his his greatness is down to how self selfish he is for wanting to the, the pursuit of being the best. You know that that we we benefited from that. Yeah. But I just think that having him around would cause more problems moving forward. Ronaldo isn't the future of Manchester United. Unfortunately, it's the past, okay. and we got a great season out of him. I just don't think that him being at Old Trafford any longer is any good for United or Cristiano Ronaldo. Do you think United? I know this sounds silly question because you kind of answered it, but I'll ask you anyway. Do you think United finish higher, get more points with Ronaldo out of the squad or out of the team or the club than with him in? I think more players will have to chip in for goals. Yeah. And it was, wasn't there some statistic before Ronaldo joined that we actually scored more goals over a season when Ronaldo wasn't there? Yeah. My, my, I mean, I was watching those games. I was there for, for them. And one thing I was impressed with was the front three, the way Ooh. they linked up. Marshall dropping deep, holding up that ball, pushing it out wide to Rashford and Sancho. Everyone bombing forward as well. Proper, like, great attacking football. Um, does Ronaldo do that? Is, does he link up with the others as well? As well as, as Marshall was? Probably not. Does he get more goals than Marshall? Probably does. But is it the detriment of maybe Sancho yeah. and, and Rashford or Alanga or whoever? That probably is. I think you probably, you know, the question is, do you get more points and more goals with him in the team? And I'm not, I'm, I'm, and I hate sitting on the fence. I hate it. If push came to sh- shove right now, and if Ronaldo's fit, I'm still tempted, I'll be honest with you, Scotty. If he's there at the club, I'm yeah. still tempted to start him. I'm still like, and I don't know if that's because it's Ronaldo and I'm fuzzed with right. the foot. I'm still that, all this, that little part of me that thinks, yes, Marshall's had a great preseason, but he's still a guy that scored five Premier League goals in two seasons. 
do you know what I mean? And I'm still like, man. right, okay. So, so, so you're saying it's it's quite close between. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm not. I'm I'm almost like that. I'm just right, okay, right, right, right. Opinion right. for the right. sake of saying it. So, if if it's quite close, then over the space of the season, we should finish in uh, quite. No reasonable about the same same position with Ronaldo or Ronaldo yeah. Ronaldo on that on that on that basis yeah 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 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. so if we're not winning anything the positives are to bring Ronaldo off so we can build towards the future okay. that and makes uh, sense. do you know what I mean yeah. and, and, and then not this not argument. this season the next yeah. season we've got we've already got a basis to build on yeah. what I'm saying is if you, if you have this season where Ronaldo's the focal point yeah. you've got to take him out again next season and then yeah. start it all again what yeah. what's the point we're no, not winning I, I, we're not I, winning the league I this hear year that. I do hear it. My my one worry as well is I think we've we've left ourselves a bit short, on way up front because if you do start, I think you're right. Say Ronaldo doesn't go, he stays, and Tenard goes right. I'm starting with Martial. We start with Martial. Ronaldo spits his dummy out. Martial doesn't perform like we want him to. We've just we're, we're stuck almost. You've got an unhappy uh, Ronaldo who's upset. You've got Martial, who's not quite at the levels we hoped he would get back to. And we ain't really got any plan B. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And that's the concern for me is, you know, if we did have another striker or just a better... Maybe Charlie McNeil, for example, was a couple of years older. Because I think in a couple of years he'll be there. We'd be laughing because you think, okay, McNeil could come in. Because I don't like Rashford down the middle or... Like right. That. Another curveball. Go on. City won the league, got to the, the Champions League semi-finals. semi-final, scored so many goals last year. Yeah. They didn't have a number nine. No, it can be done. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so it's not the be-all and end-all no, that no, you have a striker. Not. And we no. do have uh, goal scorers. You've got Fernandes in the team. I, I fully expect Jadon Sancho to be one of the best players of the season this year. I think um, I think that, yeah, I agree. Sancho really impressed me pre-season. I thought he kind of went under the radar, the fact he disappointed last season. I thought he got kind of got a pass because everyone was so bad and he wasn't one of the worst ones. But I thought he was a little bit disappointing in terms of his numbers and stuff and his performances. It took him a while to get going. He had a purple patch in the middle of the season where Leeds and, and a couple of good games, and then he tailed off again. And I think everyone, well, everyone was rubbish. So, you know, you're not going to blame the new kid. But I expected a bit more from him, and hopefully um, we can we can get we can get more from him. And he's talented and he's doing well so far, and I, I rate him, and I was glad we got him. Um, there's 3,717 people watching this, and only 244 likes, which is an absolute, you know, as Liz Truss says, that is a disgrace, uh, if you know are what you, I'm Are you now. quoting Liz Truss? I, I'm, I'm, I won't vote for him, but I'm quota. Um, the, Get you know liking I mean? before he does more Tory quotes, please, Jesus. Like, 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 like. You've got David, you know, Ca- you got David Cameron cheese. in there. About, <laughs> banging on about cheese. Well, she goes, we import 80% of our cheese. That is a disgrace. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a Liz Trust fan, obviously. Uh, Peter Kelly says, off topic, Jay, but did you see the field fight I sent you on Instagram? Trump's the United v Arsenal one in 91. I think I did. I can't remember. I'll go and have a look, Peter. Thank you for that. Um, also... <laughs> Mate, you stitched me up with that Liz Truss thing. Now everyone's <laughs> going into it. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me. How do you know? I'm gonna get me windows put through. Yeah, terrible. that's it. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to you move know? out of Salford. Uh, Mank Mike ninety three says, "Glad to see you back in the studio, Jay. Hope you had a mint time over on the tour." Um, Hungry Al Packer says, J- uh, "Melbourne misses you, Jay. Honestly, I can't thank the Aussies enough in Melbourne, in Perth." And, you know, and also the people in town, everyone was so, so friendly. I feel a lot of love, a lot of appreciation. And also, just on a quickly on a personal note, people coming up to me, oh, you know, eight years sober, and, rah, rah, and thanks for being so open about stuff you've been through. It means a lot, you know, you hear them little yeah, things. Cause, um, also, Manchester United are actually playing. Um, is it finished, Joe, or is it ongoing? It, we've won. Another game. We've beaten one of the top European powerhouses as well. So this is a good sort of marker of where we're going to stand in Europa. We've beaten Wrexham. 4-1. So, and also, um, it looks like Ronaldo was in the stands, Christian Eriksen scored, um, and Lissandro Martin has played as well. He's not messing about. He's got to confirm this <laughs> morning. <laughs> there you go, son. Eager to See that shirt man. they just made you take a picture of him while you're playing in it. Now, um, I love this as well. The evening news has got Christian Eriksen scores on first Manchester United appearance as Lissandro Martinez plays in secret friendly. So secret, it's all over the evening news. Secret Yeah, friendly. it's a secret friendly. Do you know what I mean? No one knows about it. Obviously, behind a closed doors game against Rex and no disrespect to him. It doesn't tell you a lot, but it's good that they're getting a bit of minutes in. We've got some games coming thick and fast as well, haven't we? We've got one on Saturday in Norway. Um, I'm gonna be there for that one. And then we've got one on the is it one on the Saturday, one on the Sunday or Valencia 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 Valencia
Obviously, you know, we're not going to play the same teams for that, but everyone's getting a game. We saw it on the tour, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Getting a game. Um, just quickly on Ronaldo. I know we've spoken about him a lot. There was these reports that Mendes actually wants us to renew his contract to give him a loan. What do you make of that? What? Yeah. That, uh, that's, this, there was this thing, idea. I don't know if this is nonsense. And if you get involved in the comments and tell me it was just rubbish. But I think, um, I think there was these reports that maybe we're going to get him to extend his contracts and, and, and then get him up because that would enable us to loan him out and bring him back. Now, that seemed far-fetched to me and I think it might be nonsense. That Do doesn't benefit. And who does that benefit? Why, why would we want like 47-year-old Ronaldo at United just keep I don't Even by United contract, standards, I, I can't see that happening. I think it might have already just been poo-pooed that one. Um, Matt Novichich says, welcome back, Jay. Couldn't decide for Barca. Same day they asked Frankie de Jong to take a 40% Pay cut, lol. Got all, love it. Up United and up the paddock. Matt's a member of the academy as well for seven months. Make sure you're going to check out the member section. Got some loads more content coming up there soon. Yeah, that doesn't seem likely. What about this um, Anthony thing? I don't know. Because regardless what happens with, with Ronaldo, whether he stays or goes or whatever, I still think we need another attacker. Yes, definitely. Anthony seems to be the prime target. We love a Dutch, well, I know he's not Dutch, but a player from the Dutch league. Ajax have been fluctuating with their valuation, anything between 40 million and 80 million, depending, or 100 million, depending on... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just guess. Uh, uh, for a dad, for a dad. Yeah, 98 million. Yeah. Um, do you think we're going to get him? And do you want him? I do want him. Uh, I, th I think he's, he's doable. Uh, obviously, Ajax have been proper rinsed this, this summer, but I mean, imagine the bank manager's pretty happy about hey. what, how things are looking. Um, yeah, we, we, we are short up front, and if Ronaldo does go, then obviously we, we are going to need someone else for, for, for goals. And he looks like a decent player. I don't think that Anton is the, the Brazilian of old in terms of flair. is a little bit more direct, which, yeah. you know, which may suit the, the Premier League a little bit. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, I think we were talking about, me and Joe were talking about his transfers live a few weeks ago, and he seems like a player who could be about to hit big things. And now you're thinking, do we need to get him now? Yeah. Because if we wait a season and he has a world day, he is going to cost you 100 million and we yeah. probably won't get him. Um, where now, hopefully, we can get Ajax down a little bit because some of the figures being bandied about for a player who has had basically two good seasons. Yeah. But I mean, but th th this is the thing that um, I think we spoke about on the show before is that we need to be buying for players that are just underneath that, that level that are ready to break through. Okay, not all of them will. If we, I've got like Martinez uh, and Antona, you know, just on the, just on the cusp maybe of, of becoming European greats then that's what we have to, to, to build towards the future, turn them, turn them into world-class elite footballers. Our Old Trafford under Eric Ten Hag, and obviously he's play, played with Martinez before, he's played under Ten Hag, so it makes sense of him coming in. He'll know the sort of the, the structure and setup that Ten Hag wants, uh, United, uh, want, wants the players to do. So, yeah, I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's not my money. I'd, I'd give him 100 mil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only reason I always sort of say, obviously the Glazers take ridiculous amounts of money out of the club and you know if you had my way like you said I'd be just throwing money at everyone but we have this budget don't we and it's like we spend so much on one player we can't go and spend an, uh, more on other players which is a little bit frustrating uh, JB says can't wait to see the back of CR7 he's petulant slaps kids and is disloyal um, I think this is the phone thing when he slapped yeah, the phone I mean yeah, I didn't yeah. really you know I thought I was mildly amusing I'm sorry um, one Martinez says, uh, Jay, you go at uh, United versus Liverpool Monday, the 22nd of August. That's the second home game, right, isn't it? I'm actually on holiday. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wish I was. I'll tell you, because I mean, I was on holiday for, holiday for the last one. Was you? Yeah. You lucky, lucky man. Um, Inkwell Flood says, Anthony is simply quality. Um, there's a bit of a charity event this weekend. Um, I mentioned this a few weeks ago. Um, it's to raise money for the, I think it's for the British Heart Foundation. Um, there's a game, it's Ermston Meds, um, um, Ermston Meds Eagles, it's a charity football match. It's this Sunday. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description, in the chat, sorry. Go and check it out. Callum Stone, who's been on the channel, it's one of his mates who's organising it. Um, so have a look at that link. I've just put in the chat there. Get involved. It's to raise money for the British Heart Foundation um, because there was um, a lad, a United fan, um, let me just get the details of it. Um, yeah, it's a lad of United fan. I think it was his kid who, who suffered. So raising some money for him and um, for the British Heart Foundation. It's a good cause. Go and have a look at that. Um, the, there's a game going on. I think it's Trafford um, against Meds. So it's all day sort of event. Starts at quarter to 11, finishes at half three. There's a raffle and bar and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, just before we do 
wrap up, right? You've been pretty positive vibes, you today. Yeah, I know, I know. Which I don't like, by the way. I don't like this new, you know, thing. You're a lot's gonna, happened. Hanging around with Australia. Fergie now, it's giving you a little <laughs> bit of a, you know, Mister Positivity all over here. I'm not mates with you for that. Um, I know we ain't talking about it, but I'm going to ask you the Frankie Dion thing. Is it going to happen? Fucking hell, that's a question. Isn't it? No, I'm I, sorry I, to throw I, it at I, you. But. Yeah, um, I just wish United would walk away. To be honest, or at least. Tell Barcelona they're walking away. I don't know why we we seem to be playing along this game between Frankie de Jong and Barcelona. You know, Barcelona doing what's right by Barcelona. Frankie de Jong's obviously right, doing right by Frankie de Jong and staying around for his wages. United are just hanging around in the winds, hoping that it falls into their lap, whereas they should be really going out there and looking for alternative uh, midfielders instead of Frankie de Jong. If United turn around to Barcelona, because no other club except for Chelsea, I don't think, have been linked with him, have they? No. Across Europe. No. Right? And if his, if his option that he wants to go to Chelsea and he, uh, wants this wage, this thing's done, then let him go. But if United walk away, Barcelona are screwed as far as I've heard because they need to have the money from United to allow the players that, you know, the Rafinas and uh, whoever, whoever else have signed. You'll like this one. Robbie Jones, is this Oscar Isaac? That's a good one. I think he's talking about you. Yeah. Yeah, you'd say that one. I, I get that quite a lot. Do you? Oscar Isaac. Well, you say you get it quite a lot. How many times have you had that? I've had it about five times <laughs> between <laughs> here and the car. Oscar, Oscar. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it's a lovely compliment. Angelina in there thinks she says it all the time. Angelina, I've told you about drinking in the morning. <laughs> 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 Yeah, she sounds like she's yeah, on the what? Should, look, look. What are you on about? Um, right. Um, if you're not doing, make sure you're hitting subscribe. Subscribe to the channel because we've got loads of videos, as I've already mentioned from the tour. We'll always go live if there's any breaking news. We've got loads of videos coming up. Um, make sure as well you're checking out Scotty and Motty. I don't know. if I've, I'm sorry. I'm link central today. I'm catching up for, I'm making up for all ground. Uh, we've not done a video for a little while, me and the, have we? No, you put, you put a video out, didn't tell me you were doing it. And then, I was like, then somebody tagged me in it. I was like, sorry. Oh, right, yeah, I put that. a link in to Scotty and Motty in the chat as well. Yeah, sorry. Because I, I said Thursday and I forgot and I was all over the guy. I, right. like, I was like, Australian time is like yeah, two weeks Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. But we'll do one next week. Our next one will be up next week. Uh, we'll do another live. Um, so we'll we'll be back on with Scotty and Motty. Make sure you're following Scotty on all your socials for any updates on Sir Alex Ferguson. Them two are like best mates now. He's confiding you. Does he message you? Not? I can't. I can't possibly disclose information. Right, but fair, if you if you are interested, follow me on Twitter at R Kid A R G H Kid. Yeah. Um, make sure as well you are like liking even and sharing all the videos on Stretford Paddock. This has been Round Our Way with Scotty and me, Jay. Thanks for watching.